Okay, we want to look at three different things here. And then we'll save the fourth for the next lesson. So if you have, if you're looking at uh, the function sine x, you have four kind of values you can put in there that you hopefully looked at reviewing what, what each of those things does. The number in front outside of the function, right? Maybe this would be better if I wrote it. Um, if you have y equals f of x, the only difference, like make the connection with what you know about um, transformations of functions. The only difference is f just stands for some function in general. We are looking at this, sine x, a specific function, but all the same things apply that you know about transformations of functions. If you have a value outside here, think about how that changes it. If you have a value inside, okay, so we have uh, this inside here. How does that change it? If we add a value on the end, how does that change it? And if we add a value inside, how does that change it? And then, of course, you'd need more brackets. But those four values, think about how they change the shape of the graph. And I think you know all of this, but we can look at it uh, more dynamically here with this. Let's do one at a time here. If you're going to change, we're going to look at sine, but you could do the same thing with cosine, right? If you have the graph of uh, cosine, let's move this over so you can see it. If you have the graph of cosine, it just looks like that, right? It has exactly the same shape. It just starts at a different point in the cycle. It starts at a maximum point not in the middle on the way up. When you think about what a sine graph looks like and a cosine graph looks like, they're the same. It just, you know, think about what the starting point is. Don't think of the starting point as zero and one. Think of the starting point as um, the middle on the way up or at the top of the phase because as soon as we start changing things, those two starting values are going to be different. So let's look at one thing. The first thing is putting a value in front. So the other ones are all zero. The 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 original function sine x and then the transform function is going to be there. If you make this number into a say a 2, you know, or a 3, let's leave it as a 3 there. Maybe as soon as I said leave it as a 3, I couldn't leave it as a 3. Um, that's that's probably what you predicted would happen. Um, it's an ex, it's a vertical expansion. Any point on the curve, on the original curve like that has a y value that's 3 times as much. You could pick anything else the same, like this one that was a half. Well, I'm almost at a half there. It's now one and a half. A point that is negative one is negative three. All right? We, I mean, that's the same as any other function that you've worked with and done transformations, that the y values get multiplied by whatever that a value is. If we make it negative, uh, if we make it negative, then it, whoops, that's not what we want. We want this. If you make it the bigger the positive number, the more expanded vertically is. If you make it sorry, if you make it into a negative number, then it's also reflected. Any point that used to be a maximum point is now going to be a minimum point. So it's it's flipped over. It'd be nice if you could kind of think about well, there's a sine curve, or we can call this maybe a negative sine curve. Okay, a negative sine curve is just upside down instead of in the middle. Instead of starting in the middle on its up upward trend, it's in the middle going down. So that's that's one of those values. I guess we should leave it at one. The second thing you're asked to change there is putting a value on the end, that D value there. If you change that, that's again what you probably predicted would happen. It doesn't expand or compress it vertically, it shifts it vertically. Okay. This, I mean you just call it a vertical shift, vertical displacement. It's going to change the maximum and minimum values and that center value. The original graph goes from negative 1 to 1. If you shift it up a few, you put it to there. Now it goes between 2 and 4. Okay, It's got a minimum of 2, maximum of 4. If you're trying to draw this, just imagine that the, the center line has been shifted from the axis up 3 in that case. Okay, Sine of x plus 3. That's different than the expansion or compression. The expansion or compression changes the... What does the expansion or compression change about the graph? Why can't I get that to stop where I want? When you expand it and compress it, 
it changes the amplitude of the thing. When you change the vertical displacement, it doesn't change the amplitude. It changes the max and min and the range and all that, but it doesn't change the amplitude. And then the third thing you're looking at there is the, the C value. C value is harder. The two horizontal changes are harder because of the scale being in, uh, you know, marked off in pi fractions, pi, pi over 2. Again, you got to get used to working with this. If you're trying to figure out how much each square is or making connections that way, look where pi is and then divide it up into, you know, pi is six spaces there. So each one's pi over six. If you change that value, it's going to just shift it horizontally. It's hard to tell that. I mean, you can you can pick values that are shifted and it matches up with itself. It's hard. That's the other reason that the horizontal stuff is harder because there's no end points, really. So you have to just kind of imagine some end points. Maybe the end points of, this, of the cycle, just look at that point for reference. Whoops. And that point for reference. Now, when I shift it, it's not going to move this point for me, but um, actually, you know what, let's maybe think about what significance the points are here that if I shift it to here, what's significant about this value of C here? Why, what's, why, why did I choose the particular values I did here? You notice what the jumps are in the numbers up here? Compared to the jumps in the numbers here, how much do the values of A change? How, what did I set it to? I set it to change 0.1 at a time, one tenth, right? Which seemed to make sense. Why would that not, oops, why would that not make sense for values of C? Why did I pick the certain numbers that I did here? What did I pick? Like what's significant about this? Let's put it where it matches up with itself. Except. Why does it match up with itself there? What's significant about that value? It's 2 pi, right? This is marked off. When I set the values for this, I set it to move by how much in a jump here? What's uh, 0.39 must be like pi over, what would that be? I don't know what I did. That's pi over 4. I must have done it as pi over 8 or something like that. Okay, with the scale I picked here, I probably should have done it as pi over six or pi over twelve or something, so it would match up with the scale. But if you if you're shifting this graph horizontally, often the the values are going to be pi over two, things like that. And I think in the tutorial they're asked you to do that. The last one is the one we're going to leave for now, which is the horizontal compression or expansion, because it hard it's people find it hard to keep track of and think about what the what's happened here because again there's no end points for reference because I think people are used to looking at end points and seeing how wide something is to see what kind of compression or expansion there is you just have to look at one cycle but when you get to this if you put a 2 in here it's going to compress it by a factor of 2 by a factor of a half right it's going to be half as big so instead of one cycle happening in 2 pi there's going to be two cycles happening in 2 pi anyways for now, I want you to be able to do those three things. This is just picking some values and, and drawing it. Maybe draw the draw the basic sine curve. Uh, I'm going to put one and negative one there, but you're you're free to choose whatever you want. And I'm going to draw the sine curve in like this. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it a bit bigger here. I put one and negative one like that, so I can compress it as well. If I'm drawing y equals sine x, it looks like this. I would put those five points on for reference. And then this one, and this one. If you're trying to draw the sine curve, then just continue the pattern. If, if you've decided that's where it starts, and this is one cycle of the pattern, and you're going to draw it in a lot more beautifully than I'm doing, but you're going to draw that in, then just complete the, you know, continue that pattern. It's another pi later, and it's up there, and then it's down here. And it's there, and it's there. Just continue that pattern and, and fill in the rest of the curve. But this is this is just y equals sine x. And then graph y equals sine of 2x maybe, or 3x, 
or a half x or whatever. Just put a couple different examples of what you think happens for each of those values. Whether you've used the calculator or not, whether you can just see what's going to happen, it's up to you. Okay? But label it. Use different colors or different line styles or something. That is y equals sine of x. And then maybe a graph y equals sine of 2x. Or y equals sine of a half x. Maybe put a negative one in there to illustrate. And do the same with the other two things.